Hi YouTube, it's me Tiffar Wilderness. Welcome to my channel and welcome to this month's end of month bot haul where I show you all the Transformer related items I've picked out throughout the month. Yes, <laughs> October 31st, yeah, Halloween and it's that day when we get the, uh, in the UK we get daylight savings time and the clocks get turned back because it's uh, you know getting into the winter so goodbye British summer time hello Greenwich mean time you know I really hate this time of year when the clocks turn back it's I mean the you know the autumn and winter's bad enough it gets all sort of dark and gray and wet and damp and horrible and cold and yeah and the 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 fact that you know the clocks actually t get turned back this time of year just just compounds that fact because it gets really dark really early in the evenings and um, I mean, OK, you gain an hour's daylight in the morning, but that only lasts for a couple of weeks as the uh, the sun continues to dip below the horizon. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's I'm not a fan of this time of year, to be honest. And of course, it's Halloween as well. That uh, thing that the Americans like to uh, celebrate. I mean, OK, they, we, they sort of do it over here as well in the UK because we've adopted certain aspects of American culture. I'm not a believer in Halloween um, and uh, I don't participate in it either, you know, because I'm just a nearly 50 something <laughs> bloke, single bloke living on his own. And uh, yeah, if the kids come round knocking on the door tonight, you know, I'll just ignore them. But uh, some, some of the kids, they, uh, they like to play pranks on you. They like to stuff things through the letterbox or, or bombard the door of your house with rotten eggs or something like that, you know. That's the sort of kids around here. And they really shouldn't be going around doing shit like that. because I mean, COVID's still a relevant thing in this country. Um, but anyway. All right. Uh, I've got a bunch of things that I've bought this month. I've got, uh, was it 13 um, arrivals? That's, I think it's about 17, 18 items in total. But um, obviously, let's, let's get on with it. Let's uh, show you what I've got. Right. So, first things first. Um... First thing I did this month um, was went to the NEC Toy Fair. Yes, first time in forever we've had an NEC Toy Fair. Um, the last one I went to was in uh, February uh, 2020. I mean, you get the uh, you get those. Um, I used to do the early bird tickets, so you get those uh, those sort of these sort of things here, the early bird tickets, and I like to collect them. To make up a, like a, a sticker sheet so there's a uh, well 2018 obviously i've got a full set in 2018 and, and uh, 2019 uh but in 2020 obviously i did the february one and then all the other nec toy fairs got cancelled because of the covid and then this year <laughs> two cancellations and suddenly the nec toy fairs are back so on October 3rd, I went over to the NEC. You had to prove to the, the NEC staff because they had like a, like a COVID cordon outside the NEC entrance, you know, checking people when they were coming in to make sure that, you know, they had to show proof that they were then either had their, you know, COVID jabs or they'd, they'd had a recent COVID, you know, like a, a lateral flow test or something to prove that they were clean and uh, not COVID infected. And uh, then you was given a little armband to put around your wrist to prove that you know, you've been through the COVID cordon and uh, then was into the event. Now, as per usual, I went in for the um, what we call the early bird ticket because the event opens to the public at 10.30, but uh, you know the early bird ticket allows you to get in from eight o'clock onwards, so up to two and a half hours early, and you get in while people are still setting up. I mean, obviously, um, I decided to take a little uh, out and about video because it's the first sort of like, public event I've been to since since the COVID, you know, sort of kicked off in the UK in sort of March 2020. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> so I did a little video and put it up on YouTube in the evening. And uh, yeah, it got uh, it got quite a lot of views. And uh, um, thank you to anybody who watched it. Um, it got like over 100 views in the first 24 hours, over 200 views in the first um in the first 48 hours and it's, it's got I don't know how many views it's got on it right now it must be easy four or five hundred views on it now but uh, yeah that was great uh, not a great video by any stretch of the imagination I just sort of I had very limited sort of memory on my on my on my phone so I, don't, I was only able to stop at certain points around the hall and sort of do panoramic views of the of what was going on and maybe look at a few the certain stalls like the uh, uh, space bridge was there and uh, also uh, geekology um, 
there wasn't a busting lot of uh, you know Transformer stuff at this particular toy fair. Um, and a lot of the stuff I see or I saw was was stuff you know mostly stuff I'd already got. There wasn't anything there particularly that floated my boat. But um, I had taken a little bit extra money than what I'd usually take. I mean, I I like to take you know at least a hundred quid to an NEC toy fair, and I I drew the money out of my uh, you know, TF Nation uh, account. So it was a, a separate budget. It was just a separate budget to my usual sort of money that I spend for uh, you know my uh, transformer collecting in a month every month. Um, so uh, yeah, and uh, I uh, the twenty quid was going to be used to pay for the um, the, uh, the 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 early bird ticket, but I managed to scrounge up a bit extra cash out my my bedside uh, drawer, so I had one hundred and twenty quid going in. And as I was going round, um, I saw this. So there was a guy on a stall had this on the back of his stall. And I saw it and I thought, oh, Transformers Collector's Guide. And I, thought, I could do with one of those. A guide that you know that lists all the. You know the the uh, you know the the G1 characters and it shows you you know their packaging and uh, you know the accessories they come with and stuff like that, and that's what I thought this was. Now I went up to the stall and I sort of had a quick you know sort of a, a quick flick through like that because you know because of COVID restrictions I was wearing a face mask I was wearing gloves I'd, I'd sanitised and all that stuff and the bloke was sort of standing around the other side of the the uh, the stall and. Uh, he was watching me, and I thought, well, I don't want to stand here and just go through the whole thing and check it out. So I just, I just had a quick flip through it. I said, how much is that, mate? He said, 20 quid. So I bought it. wasn't until I got home and I went through this thing properly that it turned out to be not what I thought it was. Yes, this is a guide to, you know, collector's guide to Transformers, but it's a collector's guide to Transformers merchandise and not the toys. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's got, like, like the comics... Uh, you know, it's 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 all the other stuff that's transformer related. So I was very disappointed in that. I was expecting it to be you know a, a collector's guide to you know to the G one, G two, G one point five toys and stuff like that, all the early stuff. But uh, it wasn't. I mean, the, the cover kind of makes you think that it's got a load of toys in it. I mean, you've, you've got a G two Devastator here. You know, it's so it makes you think that the, the, the toys are in there, but they're not. The only toys that were in there were those um Coro Q. Uh, Transformers that Takara did, you know, the little little uh, chibi sort of um, figures that they did. But, uh, yeah, I, I was very disappointed by this. Um, 20 quid I paid for it, and, yeah, buyer's regret. <laughs> I wish I hadn't bought this, but there are some. there is some interesting stuff in this. It, it is a, an interesting thing, you know, when it shows you some of the stuff they slapped, you know, the Transformers logo on over the years. It's quite amazing. But it um, wasn't quite what I thought it was. And it was a bit disappointing, but you know, there you go. I I, I bought it, and it wasn't until I got home to realise I'd made a bit of a mistake. But there we go. It was twenty quid. That it was extra twenty quid I I bought with me anyway. So you could argue it was neither here nor there. But uh, anyway, got that. And then obviously I walked around, didn't see much. But then I found one guy who had some stuff on his stall, and you know. And a couple of masterpiece figures. Now I was looking up at him and I, and I saw this figure and I thought, how much is that? And he said it is a hundred quid. And I thought, well, that was all the money I had left. It was exactly the same amount. But I sort of left it, walked around the rest of the hall with my mate Richard. We got to the back, we went into the uh, the cafe and we had a had a drink. And then I decided, I oh, know I'm, I'm going to go back and get it because I was on my way out. And I went back to the store and I bought it and got me. A masterpiece ratchet. Yeah, this is a, an official masterpiece ratchet. It was a used one, but it came in its original box with instructions and all the accessories. So it's it's all complete. Um, it's in it's in really good condition. The joints are nice and tight. There was a little bit of a little bit of sticker wear on one of the stickers. Um, and also, when you look at it in daylight, um, it appears like there's a little bit of yellowing on some of the parts on this figure. It's not quite. I mean, it's probably shown as being brilliant white with my lights illuminating it but uh, in artificial light it looks okay but when you're looking at it with real light it does look there's a slight yellow tinge to some of the other parts like like his hips and um, some of the pieces of the van mode but so if I'd have known that I might have asked the guy to knock the price down a little bit but um, apart from that 
it's brilliant. I mean, Ratchet is one of my favourite G1 characters. I, I much prefer him to... Well, I, I, I couldn't give you the time of day for Ironhide, to be honest, because I know I wasn't a fan of the uh, the G1 cartoon, but I was a fan of the G1 comics, and Ratchet got a couple of really good storylines in the Marvel G1 comic, and uh, I like him for that reason. And various versions of Ratchet over the years have been really interesting. I mean, you've got the animated Ratchet, you've got the Prime Ratchet, you know, really, really good characters. So, yeah, I, I really wanted to, to get him. He was sort of on the back burner of one of the masterpiece figures I wanted to get. Uh, the price I paid for him, 100 quid for a used one. I mean, eh, you could argue that's, that's par for the course. I mean, when I looked online to see how much an official one is to buy on eBay, you know, you've got people in Japan who've got official ones that they're selling. They're asking like 150, 160 quid, 170 plus postage, you know. So you'd be lucky to get one for, for, well, for less than 150 quid online. Uh, and yes, there's the KO one, which is probably, you would argue, is every bit as good as the uh, the official one. And you can get those for like 35, 40 quid. Um, I'm one of these people, I could go for the uh, the uh, the knockoff, but I, I prefer to get the official one. And um, I got this. And he's brilliant. He's brilliant. I love this guy. He's absolutely fantastic. He's a, he's a really cool figure. Decent transformation. You know, I really like him. He's a likeable character, and I finally got hold of a Masterpiece Ratchet. So, yeah, he was uh, my <laughs> only other item that I got at the NEC Toy Fair. So that was that. So then <clears throat> we move on to the other stuff that I picked up. Obviously, those items I bought using that extra money that I took out of my uh, TF Nation account. So they're not part of the uh, the budget going forward into the rest of the month. Just thought I'd make that clear in this, this video. So next, um, comics. Uh, yeah, I've been going a bit mad with the comics again this month. Um, I, I started. I, I got back into the comics with the uh, the uh, the Beast Wars 25th anniversary IDW comic, and uh, I've been sort of getting into picking up other comics as well of recent times, like uh, the Shattered Glass. I've uh, got into and that King Grimlock as well. And uh, there's a few other bits and pieces going on, but uh, I've been buying my comics through um, Comics and Cocktails because, you know, um, my local comic shop is shut down. And, you know, if I want to buy comics, you know, from a shop, I have to either go into Coventry to Forbidden Planet or go to Boundary to uh, Collectors Assemble, um, which is involves driving, you know, 20-odd you know, miles in either direction and... Yeah, you know, you're increasing the risk of uh, you know meeting a you know mixing it up with other people in, in out of your area and you know COVID restrictions and all that. You know, I don't want don't need to do that. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, I placed an order uh, at the beginning of the month for some uh, comics and cocktails comics, and uh, they arrived on the seventh. So I got Beast Wars number eight. Got Shattered Glass number two. And I've decided to go back and well and finish and I've decided to start going back and looking at some of the comics that I missed out on when I was away from you know comic buying. Because I I I I quit comic buying back in early twenty was it early twenty twenty? And then I was I was out of the game for like a full year or more before I got back into it. And um uh, it was mainly because the, my local comic shop took over my uh, comic subscription from the other comic supplier I was with, and they made a complete hash of it. And also, I wasn't enjoying the comics that they were the, the IDW comics that were coming out at the time. And it was the Transformers Galaxy, um, the first arc in the Transformers Galaxy series, which was the um, the Devastator arc. I wasn't enjoying it, so that was part of the reason why I quit getting comics. So I've only got the first three parts of the the Devastator four part arc, and I thought, well, why don't I just pick it up because you know comics and cocktails still had it in stock so i got the final part of uh, transformers galaxies um uh, number four which is the final part of the uh, the devastator arc it was all right it was okay um so i finished that off but it, it made me think what else is in the galaxies line so later on in the month i um started looking out for and picking up uh, some of the other you know transformers galaxies uh, comics but uh, for now, that was my, my first comic order of the month. Then we move on and uh, I did an unboxing video on it. On uh, the 11th, I had a couple of parcels turn up, uh, did an unboxing video and uh, only showed two out of the three items that I got. Um, so, yeah, 
Last month, uh, I tried to get a, uh, a, a Chinese reissue of a Hello Carbot character out of AliExpress, and they sent me the wrong figure. So I tried again this month, and I finally got the figure I wanted, Hello Carbot's Zesty. Um, he's part of the uh, Hyperbuildian um, combiner, or the uh, the Proud Jet combiner. Um, wanted this guy because you know he's, he's he's pretty cool little orange bot. You know I like the color orange, and he turns into a Humvee. And uh, yeah, he's a decent little figure. He's got a reasonable amount. He's not very big. You know, obviously he's, he's like a pretty much a deluxe size figure. Um, he turns into like a breast master for the combiner. He sort of folds up, and he's got he's got another combiner head back here. And uh, yeah, he's all right. He's okay. Um, not quite as great as I was expecting him to be. I mean, I've been after this thing for a couple of years. And you couldn't buy him separately until now because it always came bundled as part of a two pack. Um, but uh, they, they decided to sell it separately off, uh, you know, in, in uh, you know China, and uh, you could get the figures through AliExpress. Um, but it just took me two attempts to get one because I, I got sent the wrong figure the first time around. So I got him. He's okay. He's all right. Not quite as great as I thought it was going to be, but he was a decent enough little figure. Then on the same day, um, also got this guy. Now, depending on your point of view, will depend on what character this is. Because it's a certain mould, and oh, yeah, it's pissing down again, you can probably hear it. Um, depending on uh, which version of the toy you've got, whether you've got the Takara version or the Hasbro version, depends on what character it is. But it's a particular mould in a particular colour. So, got this. Now, this is the Takara, um, was it uh, Super Mode Starscream? And in the latter episodes of Armada, Starscream gets a power up, power up and he ends up in these colours. And obviously, they basically start, you know, Thundercracker's colours, but uh, he gets a power up. And uh, I think he, he sacrifices himself in the final battle against Unicron or something. I've not really watched the, the final episodes of the Armada show. I've got the first couple of episodes, but I'll sort of give up on it after that. But anyway, I've been after a Armada Thundercracker. And very difficult thing to get hold of. Um, uh, the original one... Whenever you see it, it's usually missing all its. It's missing its wings. It's missing missing this, missing that. You know, it's it's missing all its parts. It's incomplete. And then there was that um, that repaint, that Legends repaint that they did in Japan of one of the um, the deluxe uh, thing. But that goes for a horrendous amount of money. So I was looking around and I found this seller in the UK who was selling this for a reasonable price. It's mostly complete. Uh, the only thing it's missing is the Minicon. Which is a bit of a shame because you know if I have an Amada figure, I like to have a Minicon with it. But uh, this guy is a thing, and uh, hang on, let's just hold this. There we go. That works. He does make sounds. Very weak sound. So obviously the batteries are about to. Uh, about shot on it, I think. Um, but yeah, but again, this mold, this very mold in these very colours, was depending on which version of the figure you got, was a, a totally different character. Uh, to me, this is Armada Thundercracker, but of course, it totally isn't. It's you know, it's Super Mode Starscream. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I, I wanted to get a version of the Armada, you know, sort of seeker in Thundercracker colours and I've achieved that even if the one I've actually got isn't the character that I thought it was. But yeah, I got hold of him. He's a, he's a big heavy heavy figure. Uh sort of limited articulation. He's got a bit of obviously he's got a fair bit of kibble hanging off his back. But you know, he's got decent heel spurs to, to stand up. Um his hips don't really move that much. They only move backwards and forwards. They don't move side to side. Yes, he's got sound effects which are a bit weak because the battery must be weak but managed to get him didn't pay that much for it about 45 quid which is a good price for this figure um but uh, yeah so i actually got hold of him and he arrived on the 11th same as uh, zesty and then the other figure i showed in the unboxing video energon mirage yeah so 
His sound box works perfectly. <laughs> yeah, so this guy, I've been after this guy for a while. And I'm pretty sure this figure wasn't actually released in the UK. Because there's plenty of sellers in the US selling it, but you hardly ever see anybody in the UK selling it. So, and the prices, the Americans were asking for it, but they were like, you no, know, 40, 45 quid plus probably like 15 to 20 quid postage. And then they were doing it through that global shipping program thing. So you had to pay the VAT on top of it as well. So if you was going to buy one of these off eBay, you know, US, you'd probably be paying like 75, 80 quid for one. And that's, that's unacceptable, to be honest. Um, yeah, he's an interesting figure. It turns into a boat. Um, and a John Mirage. Apparently he's a, he's a re reformatted version of um, Tidal Wave. So Tidal Wave in, in the latter episodes of um, Energon got turned into Mirage. Why they changed his name, I don't know. They could have quite easily called him Tidal Wave, but he certainly got a bit more vocabulary in his voice. Instead of going, Tidal Wave, Tidal Wave, you know. <laughs> but no, he's a decent figure. Quite a fiddly transformation, but you know, he turns into a boat. You know, how many boat formers do you get? Unfortunately, he's got a lot of kibble and he's got like the whole bolt boat hold, you know, sort of hanging off his back. You, you can sort of stick it up in the air if you want. Um, and he's got, you know, these big old flaps sticking off the side. So he, he's a bit kibble-tastic when you're transforming him, you know. The uh, the legs like to pop off because the mushroom pegs on his on his hips are a bit, you know, aren't the strongest. Um, yeah, but... You know, he's all right. He's all right. He's a pretty cool looking bike. He's got some nice, rocking some nice colours. Um, he's got a pretty good light piping. There's, there's a lot going for him. And uh, he doesn't do that stupid Power Links gimmick like a lot of the other Energon, the Autobot Energon figures do. So the Decepticons have got it going on. They really have in the Energon line. Not so much the Autobots because they're all, they're all sort of, uh, sort of hampered with that uh, Power Links gimmick. But uh, the uh, Decepticons are okay and I've finally got hold of one of these. Again, I, I paid about 40 something quid for it off a, off a, a UK seller. There was another guy who had a, a box Takara version because it's called, um, was it uh, Shock Fleet, the, the Takara version? But he was um, he was missing you know, one, of the one of the launchers, one of these launchers. But this loose one came with the launchers but no missiles. What well, did it come with the missiles? I can't remember. I think he does come with the missiles actually. But at least, at least his uh, sound box works perfectly. So. Yeah, he's a he's a really good figure. He's okay. He's slightly flawed, but uh, managed to get hold of him finally. So that was uh, another figure to tick off the old bucket list. Right. So that was everything that arrived on the eleventh. So moving on um, on the uh, the thirteenth, uh, one of my my first sort of Korean purchases this month arrived, and it's this gal. Hello Carbots Samba Night Hopper or Night Hopper. Um, yes, another one of those that's got a bit of ambiguity in the name. In my review, I called it Night Hopper. That's night as in medieval night and hopper with two Ps. Apparently that was wrong. Um, on the top of the box, it's got like a, some faint writing on the top that says night as in night and day and hopper with one P. Um, yeah, <laughs> I get a lot of this. Um, Korean names... Uh, because uh, Choi Rock never bothered to translate the show into English, they uh, none of their shows have been translated into English, either subtitles or dubbing. And um, there's always going to be this ang ambiguity with some of the character names, and the way that the Koreans pronunciate certain certain words when you're listening to the words being spoken by the Korean characters, it's it yeah. You, sometimes you hear it wrong because you no, know, they pronounce it in such a way that it sounds like they're saying something else. Such is the case with this. But uh, I was looking at the Samba toy line because it's got this gimmick whereby, um, you know, you get the, this chunk of the vehicle mode which turns into a beast. Oh, come on. And you get get like an owl in this case called M view bird so you know, this chunk of the vehicle mode turns into a bird and then it combines with the uh, with the robot
and uh, gives it a huge power up in the show. Everything's so tight on this. There we go. And uh, I quite like the look of this character, so I decided to go for Night Hopper um, first. She's pretty cool. She's the, like, the, like, the the first sort of fembot character from this subline. Um, got a few issues. It's got like these kibble flaps sort of hanging off her thighs, which is a bit unfortunate. I mean, but you know, her proportions are decent, and uh, her alt mode's an ambulance. You know, it's a plain white ambulance. Not much more you can say about that. Um, really heavy, shiny, well-made figure. Unfortunately, my, mine's got a QC issue now. Um, the ratchet on this arm is broken. I mean, it should sound like that. But in my review, you'll probably hear that this ratchet is making sounded a bit sickly. I decided to take it apart and have a look. And one of the... Uh, they've got these fingers on the pawl that go into slots. And one of them have broken off. I sw switched it round, put it back together, and it instantly snapped the other pawl off. So now I've got <laughs> no ratchet on that arm. It's a shame, really. It's the first time I've ever had a ratchet failure on a Hello Carbot figure. Um, when you look at the design of it, it's easy to see how it failed because, you know, they had them thin white plastic fingers which were quite weak and, you know, there's a possibility that they might snap at any time, you know. But, you know, it's a thing. But uh, I'm not too bothered about that, to be honest. I mean, there's enough friction in the joint so that she can uh, do her stuff. But, you know, she's a, she's a decent figure. Um, I really like it and uh, I will be looking at getting more figures from the... Uh, the Hello Carbot um, Samba line in possibly in the new year because next month uh, I'm going to be getting some characters from a different toy line altogether. So that's her, and uh, that arrived on the 13th. So then, um, then it was like 10 days until the next figure arrived, and it was a bit of a surprise because. Um, um, earlier in the year, I'd placed some pre-orders with Hasbro Pulse for some of the uh, Kingdom Way 4 figures. And then you get that email book saying, oh, these aren't coming out till either back end of the year or, or 2022. You know, it's like, you, know, you get you get those emails saying, oh, it's not coming out for months. And uh, so I placed a pre-order. And then suddenly I uh, got uh, an email um, from them saying, oh, your orders have been shipped. You know, they basically got them in early and they've shipped them out. And uh, so on the 23rd, it arrived. Kingdom Waspinator. Right. Or, why is your universe hates Waspinator? Yeah, you know, it's him. It's, it's Waspinator. I like to think I can do his voice somewhat. Um, yeah. <laughs> Kingdom Waspinator. Um, well, instantly, I... If I can pick it up, I will do the comparison with the generations for Inferti Waspinator, and obviously you can see the Free Inferti's Waspinator is much much bigger, much much thicker, much much chunkier. He's got more butch, more hench proportions than this uh, weedy little uh, Kingdom version. Um, the paint apps, I mean, this one's got is rocking a lot more sort of the lighter green. This has got some light green accents on it, but they're they're not that much lighter than the the original green that's on there. So, yeah, they don't show up quite as well. But then again, you can argue this one's more screen accurate in its colours than the uh, the Frilling 30s Generation one. Um, Transformation's pretty similar. Um, he has got a few things. It's got a lot of paint on the head, which is good. Um, it's an okay figure. The only other thing that bugs me about this is the thickness of the, uh, the bug, bug legs. Because if you look at the Generations one, it's got much, much thinner bug legs. Much, much more spindly bug legs, which look better, I think. These ones, they're like super chunky, especially the ones they have sticking off the side of his legs. So, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, the Freedom 30s one's got that flapping wing gimmick as well. So, it swings and roundabouts, really. Both these figures have their plus and their minus points. Um, overall, I would admit I prefer the Freedom 30s Generation 1 to the Kingdom 1, but I was going to get the Kingdom 1 anyway, because, you know, I'm a... Uh, I'm, uh, I'll, I'm, uh, Buying majority of the Kingdom line. Um, there's a lot, lot of stuff in there that I'm uh, getting after, especially Beast Wars characters, you know, because I, I, I never really got many of the original Beast Wars characters, but uh, I am a fan of the show, so it, it was, you know, <laughs> it's my chance to, to, to get them all again. But uh, yeah, now after getting these guys, I'm kind of thinking I'd like to character mold set collect um, Waspinator now. 
Um, as far as I know, there's two other moulds that I haven't got. Um, there's the original Beast Wars mould, which I'm kind of hoping they're going to reissue next year as part of this 25th anniversary reissue of the original toys that they've been doing. I know they're supposed to be doing Tarantulas and Scorponok next year, so hopefully they'll be doing a, you know, they'll be doing a, a an original Beast uh, Beast Wars um, Waspinator character as well. Um, then there's the animated one. So I've been looking at getting hold of an animated one. There was one on eBay I was watching a couple of days ago, but uh, that that's been and gone. But uh, I'll have to keep my eyes out for the animated one as well. So I'm kind of thinking about collecting moulds for uh, for Waspinator, but I've got the Kingdom one. He's okay, but I don't like him quite as much as the uh, the, the Thrilling Thirties Generation toy. It's down to personal preference at the end of the day. I just prefer the uh, Generations toy more than the Kingdom one. That's That's just me. I might be wrong, but there you go. Right, so, moving along. Um, yeah, so it's basically stuff coming in now, because throughout the middle of the month, I, I, I had to hold back on buying stuff, because you got the Hascon coming up towards the end of the month, well, the, the 22nd and 23rd. So, yeah, I was... Not I had about was it about ninety quid left in my budget, and I wanted to keep it keep my powder dry, so to speak, to see what other things would uh, get revealed in the house con. There was something a particular sort of uh, two pack figure two pack that I was hoping to be get released as part of the uh, the house con exclusive uh, figure line. But anyway, moving along, uh, the next thing to arrive. Right, twenty fifth of October. Literally did the review on it yesterday. Um, yes, Mini Force Lucy Bot. Now this is the original Lucy Bot from the original or well, the first Mini Force season. Um, uh, passed over it years ago, and th these toys first came. And this this toy line came out in 2014, and uh, this is one of the original figures as part of the original combiner, which uh, apparently is called Giantron. Um, thank you, KR Brickbot, for pointing that out. I, I did look online at a, you know, like a Mini Force wiki page, and it did mention that it was Giantron on there. But when you listen to the characters talking about the you know, the, the the combiner in the show, they only just refer to it as the the the, the, the four way fusion combiner. They don't actually call it by its name, Giantron. Um, so anyway, got hold of uh, Lucy. Bought this from Eleventh Street now. I have to say now, a little bit of a rant, I suppose. Uh, 11th Street, um, I've been having a lot of trouble with that website lately. Um, really troublesome, and it's it's largely due to their uh, online security measures, or rather lack of them. When you're logging in, you get, you know, HTTPS, Hypertext, Transfer, Protocol, Secure, you know, and, you know, the login's all nice and safe, but when it goes onto the main site, it just transfers onto a regular server that's got no security on it whatsoever and my web browsers i mean i, I was used to use the site through the the google chrome and it, it, it had this little black triangle in the co top corner of the screen which when you click on it it said this website is insecure and unsafe blah 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 and it was blocking my transactions when i was trying to buy stuff on the site it was it was deliberately kicking me out and sending me back to the home page and um it got really frustrating to try and buy stuff off that website. So then I thought, okay, I'm going to try a different web browser. So I tried to um, log in using um, the other web browser on my phone, which is the uh, the Samsung um, Android web browser. But it wouldn't allow me to log in. I tried logging in with this computer using uh, you know um, Microsoft Edge, and it wouldn't allow me to log in. And later on, I found out that there was a typo in my password. So I had to go in using my uh, Google Chrome browser, reset my password, and then I was able to get in using different web browsers. But again, those web browsers were also flagging that site up as being troublesome and insecure. And I had similar problems with some of the other browsers. They were they they would allow me to click on an item to buy it, but when it came to the payment page. Um, if you're an international seller buying off 11th Street and G Market, you're only allowed to pay with PayPal. Well, you're allowed to pay with your car, but you but only international sellers are allowed to pay with PayPal. And when you place your order, um, it has to go through a certain process, and then it, the PayPal option lights up, and then you can use it to pay with PayPal. 
I was having problems. Uh, I was going through to the payment page and the PayPal option wasn't wasn't activating. So it was basically it wasn't logging the fact that it was an international sale. It was thinking it was an uh, you know like a Korean sale, and I just had nothing but trouble with it. And then there's the shipping. Right. Um, they do this, right? They do EMS. You get these massive, great shipping labels on their packaging. Um, you have to do the double shipping. You have to do the the national shipping from the seller to the, the hub or the, the warehouse, and then they repackage it, and then they send it international. This item, um, I ordered it on the 2nd, and it arrived on, what was it, the 25th. So it took 23 days to get from Korea to the UK. Buying stuff off G Market, are you the G Market? They have EMS as well, but they also have a FedEx shipping option, which is considerably cheaper than EMS, and it's faster. You can get your stuff from Korea using G Market and FedEx. You can get it like 10 to 12 days, not 20, <laughs> 20, 22 days as this one was. I mean, looking at the tracking code, this thing sat at the airport warehouse for over a week because it missed its flight to the UK. By a, by a day and then it had to wait a full week before the following flight the following week before they had sent it out so yeah and uh, expensive I mean the cost of EMS shipping is, is like it's like like 25 30 quid whereas you know um, the shipping on uh, G market you know FedEx shipping is probably somewhere about 18 to 20 quid you know it's it's stuff like that I mean and and I G market has got similar security issues to um, to 11th Street, but I'm, at least I'm allowed to buy stuff off that site without the uh, the browser getting upset. And I'm just I'm just up to here with 11th Street. I'm having so many trouble, so much trouble trying to buy stuff out out that site. This is going to be the last figure I buy out of there for for a while until they overhaul that site and and put in you know extra security measures for online browsing. You know HTTPS all the way through the website. I I won't be buying anything off there anymore. So yeah, I managed to get this out of 11th Street. It was pretty expensive, you know. It was like it well, it was over 60 quid, but then I got you know a couple of days later, I got like a slight shipping refund. So it was it was about 58, 59 quid, which is still over the odds for what this thing is worth. But I like her. <laughs> she's a decent figure. She's she's chunky. She's um, she's heavy. She's got you know lots of uh, lots of you know lots of ratitude. Um, she's pretty cool and. She's built to the same designs as the original Mini Force combiner, so she combines with my original Mini Force figure, even though this is a reissue. And yeah, so next month I'm looking to buy the other two bots to make up the uh, the Giantron combiner. Um, won't be buying them from 11th Street. Uh, I, I've got them. You no, know, I've got some items um, sort of on my wish list on uh, G Market, but uh, KR Brickbot again has said, oh, all the Mini 4 stuff is now getting issued on um, in China and uh, you, you can buy it through um, uh, AliExpress. And yeah, I have had a look on there this morning and sure enough, the, the AliExpress is absolutely rammed, packed solid of Mini 4 stuff at the moment. But you know, you can find the original Mini 4 figures being sold in China. And the price is slightly cheaper and you get free shipping, but I know I've had trouble with stuff off AliExpress of late as well, so I'll probably more more likely to buy them off uh, G Market next year. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, managed to get hold of um, LucyBot. She's all right. Just a shame I had to buy her through 11th Street, to be honest. And that was the 25th. Right, now, then it was, obviously, Hasbro PulseCon. Um... I had the day off work, so I was able to. I mean, it wasn't the the UK one didn't start till like what was it? Was it four o'clock in the in the evening when it started? So I watched it, and we got the Transformers uh, panel on the uh, on the first day. Went through and watched it. I was a bit disappointed because um, I mean they, they they showed some stuff on there, but not the stuff that I was expecting to see. I mean like they didn't show the uh, the Haslab uh, Star Saber and uh, you know Leo Kaiser figure because they've got um, you know coloured prototypes of that now. They could have showed the full you know coloured prototype of it on that that podcast, but they didn't. <laughs> they didn't even mention it. I mean, yeah, the, the, it was all right. It was okay. Um, uh, 
they showed a few things and it was okay. Uh, not quite what I was expecting, but uh, they did, did do a lot of the stuff that I was expecting. But uh, yeah, they showed us the uh, the Wave 1 uh, legacy figures that are coming out and that's all right, I suppose. But the, the main thing that I wanted from the Hascon, the reason throughout you know <laughs> the middle of the month I'd been holding fire on uh, buying stuff and uh, you know keeping my powder dry and saving my budget was because of the Hascon exclusive the um the uh, what is it War for Cybertron um uh, War for Cybertron Decepticons Forever Ravage 2 pack yes I really wanted to get that so as soon as the the pre-order went live for you know Hasbro premium members I I I jumped on it and I got me my Hasbro, well, I got me my Decepticons Forever Ravage 2-pack. When they announced this, I was, well, hell, hell yes, I want me some of that. And I mainly wanted it for this guy because, you know, I know it's a, a heavy retool repaint of the Cheetah Mole, which I've already got, but that looks so good. I mean, come on, that just looks amazing. It looks just like a Agent Ravage off that, uh, what is it, episode... Is it? I'm trying to think. It's how many episodes was in uh, season two? I can't remember. Was it twenty six episodes? Well, it was. The, it was the. It was the penultimate. It, well, it was the um, the the agenda part two, the final scene in the agenda part two when uh, you know you got Optimus Primal and uh, Cheetor and Raptrap comes over the radio and says, uh, "Fearless Leader, we've got good news and bad news." He says, "Well, what's the?" <laughs> What's the what's the good news? We don't have to cow down to that uh, Decepticon uh, uh, ravage anymore. And he says, "Why? Because he switched sides." And then, <laughs> then the <laughs> then the cruiser comes up behind, and Megatron's standing on the top. And then, you so you see Ravage go Decepticon forever, and he transforms into his cassette mode and goes into the uh, <laughs> into the into the control panel. And uh, yeah, brilliant scene. I actually got the episode on a DVD, and I, I got it out and watched it. But hell yeah, I wanted to get me hold get hold of me of a Covert Agent Ravage, I got one, he's alright, he's pretty cool, looks amazing, and uh, such a throwback to that iconic scene from uh, Beast Wars Seasons 2, I was I was going to be all over it, so yeah, I like him a lot, and uh, yeah, it came with yet another G1 Ravage, now apparently this is supposed to be um, Battlemaster, um, but they were calling it uh, Decepticons Forever Ravage, it's just a reissue of the G1, um, this is the third G1 Ravage I've got now, <laughs> and um, I was looking at the, the pictures of it, and I was wondering, have they changed the uh, the die-cast legs to plastic? Because in the pictures, it looked like they'd, they'd turned, made them out of that sort of silvery plastic. But no, it has got die-cast on it, so you know it's, it's, a, it's a pucker G1 reissue. Um, yeah, like I said, I've got three of these. I've got, um, I've got a KO... Uh, to cut a uh, micro change Jaguar that I picked up when I first started collecting because I, I had one as part of my old gang back in the day and uh, I then got a bot of the Tom Owen bot lot and uh, uh, the um, the 15th anniversary reissue of uh, Soundwave that came with the double depth tape deck and he came with laser beacon ravage so I got a ravage through that way but uh, yeah got me uh, a ravage I mean I've also got up here I've got the mastermind well the ocular max Jaguar as well, <laughs> with all the retro labels on it. Uh, got him. But yeah, another G1 Ravage. You can't have too many Ravages. I like Ravages. It's quite a cool character. But yeah, so yeah, I was really pleased to be able to get hold of that. And obviously they had them in stock. You know, you place your place your order, and then a couple of days later it turned up. That was that was that was that was brilliant. That was. Really uh, enjoy the fact, and you look online, and a lot of people have been getting that pack. You know, a lot of people have been picking it up, so it's, it's proving to be very, very popular in the, in the Transformers collectors community. Right, so that arrived on the twenty seventh. Um, also on the twenty seventh, a um, couple of other things I picked off off eBay because obviously after the Hascon, you know, went through, I, I what budget I had left, I went went online and, and had a bit of a flurry towards the end of the month and picked up a few extra things. So went on to eBay and uh, bought these guys. Fast Action Battlers. Um, Fire Blast Optimus Prime and Grapple Grip Mudflap. Now, 
I've got a couple of fast action battler figures. I've got the um, I've got the blackout, and I've got the long haul, and they're brilliant figures. They're amazing. I mean, okay, they're simplified figures for younger kids. You know, they have a, have a built-in gimmick, but they're still decently transformable and articulated bots. They've got a reasonable amount of articulation. The gimmick's not too intrusive. They're nice, solid toys, you know, and. I'm not one for buying Optimus Prime really, but uh, this version of Optimus Prime, those sort of orange colours, the, the, the fire blast colours, looks pretty cool, and it's a decent mould. So I ordered uh, these two, and this guy is actually one of my centenary bots. He's now bot fourteen hundred. <laughs> not that that uh, makes a big deal, um, because I don't really you know bother with the centenary bots anymore, because you know, I used to reserve them as um, when I get to that amount of subscribers on my channel I then will reserve re review the uh, centenary bot of that number for that uh, thing but I don't bother to do that anymore um, he's okay he's, he's got a gimmick he's got this got this missile on this tether for some reason I don't don't know why that is um, where's the launcher Oh, never mind. Yeah, it's got it's got a missile on a tether. <laughs> so when when you launch it, it doesn't go very far. But uh, yeah, got him. He's he's okay, I suppose. And then it came bundled with this guy. The uh, the uh, the mud flap. Now, I've got the original, uh, you know, sort of like movie deluxe mud flap, and that thing's a horrendous figure to transform. It's horrible. Um, so this one's a lot simpler. It's still got a few tight joints on it, and this 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 flap here just easily comes detached because the the pivot's a bit worn down on it. But he's super super hollow. I mean, he's like he's ridiculously hollow. This guy, you know, there's not much to him. Um, he has got some articulation. But he's not that great, to be honest. Um, as for one of the, um, you know, sort of fast action battler figures, he's he's not that 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 great. He's a he's, he's very hollow, um, and and the the gimmick on this guy is this um, this thing on his arm. It comes out, but to pull it back, you've got like another string on the other side that you pull it back with. So. But it goes round, it, it rolls around a capstan, so it pulls one way and then it pulls the other. Now, I'd expected that to be one of those sort of spring loaded sort of gimmicks where you pull it out, it goes click, 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 and then you press a button and it, it shoots back in. But it doesn't, it doesn't do that, which is a shame. Um, but yeah, yeah, the gimmick's a bit disappointing on this guy. Um, I'm not that impressed by him, to be honest, but he came bundled with the other figures as, 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 as a two-pack, so to speak, on uh, as, you know, used figures on a seller on eBay. So, yeah, he came as part of that. I was thinking, well, I'd be interested to see what he's like, and when I get him, he's somewhat disappointing, to be honest, as a figure. But, uh, yeah, so uh, he ain't that uh, that great, to be honest. And then, then it's uh, comics. Um, now... Uh, also on the 27th, I, I had a, an eBay comic arrive. Galaxy's number six, which is the uh, the cliff jumper arc, which is a two part arc where him and uh, Death Saurus go to this planet where they they have like a, a an energon factory where they have these these bat like people who they they harvest the energon from and uh, um, you know, well, Death Saurus decides. You know, he he thinks he's been diddled on the because uh, the quota's low by the uh, the leader of the uh, the you know the uh, the the bat people, and uh, so he basically <laughs> murders him, and uh, then finds out. Oh, when you burn these guys down, there they actually become you know, refined energon. You know, and it's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's it's an interesting uh, story, artwork by Alex Milne. So that's quite good. So that was all right, but. I got issue six and didn't have issue five, so I had to hunt around and buy uh, issue five from somebody else because I got this off eBay because it was the only because issue six was like rare as hen's teeth because these these comics are like over a year old they're like all sold out everywhere and getting hold of an issue six this was the only one I could find and it was a seller in the UK that was doing it so I managed to get hold of that 
So then I placed another order with uh, comics and cocktails. Now, I placed an order with them for f- for f- <laughs> for free comics. Um, it was um, Transformers Galaxies issue number five. It was uh, King Grimlock issue three and uh, the the new Transformers Wreckers Tread and Circuits issue one. So the package arrived the following day on the 28th. And when I opened it, there was only two comics inside, not three. Um, I thought, what the hell's going on here? And then then I noticed on my phone that I'd received a PayPal a uh, refund from Comics and Cocktails to the tune of like three pounds seventy five, which was the cost of the uh, King Grimlock comic that they left out of the uh, the um, they'd left out of the uh, they'd left out the shipment. And <laughs> it wasn't until the following day I was going to contact Comics and Cocktails and find out what 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 had transpired, what had gone on. Uh, I received a message from uh, one of the people at Comics and Cocktails apologising, you know. For for the for the issue and uh, they said you no know, they apparently it was a glitch on their system it, it it had said that the comic was in stock when it wasn't so they they uh, had to unfortunately you know sort of cancel the uh, that item from the order and give me a refund but uh, it's a shame they didn't send me the uh, the notification before they shipped the item rather than after it had arrived but needless to say it was it was a, a a bit of an issue i mean i got my money back it didn't didn't cost me anything at the end of the day i'm just missing a comic that i need so i've got to try and find that comic from elsewhere now but anyway got these they were all right i mean this now that i've finally read this this uh, this arc this cliff jumper arc and galaxies it, it was really good it was good alex by uh, i mean artwork by alex mills so it's uh, it's really good in that regard this thing um this Wreckers Tread and Circuits, uh, I'll have to suck it and see. Um, so far, it's not really doing much. I mean, it's, it's got a completely new gang of Wreckers here. But apparently, they've gone to Velocitron to, cause of the, to uh, investigate a, a, a threat, a terrorist threat from the... Um, what are they called again? From another a band of fucking bandits that are, that are threatening to... Uh, disrupt their uh, speedier race the speedier 500 race um but uh, yeah it's it's a thing uh, we'll have to see how it goes but I'm, I'm definitely getting into the comics again now but i'm not going to take out a subscription with anybody really because i uh, even though my spartown comics subscription ran for many years quite successfully with no issues as soon as it got took over by uh, collectors assemble pff, everything went to rat shit and uh, it's, it's kind of put me off having a, a, a comic um, subscription with anybody. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is. And uh, we'll just have to suck it and see. But I'm definitely in, invested in uh, buying comics again now. So that's that. That's my haul for this month. Uh, like I said, uh, quite a lot of comics, bunch of bots. And we're at the end of the video. So we've got that thing to do first and worst. Quite an easy one this month, to be honest. I mean... I was thinking that book might be my worst item, but then another bot arrived towards the end of the month, which uh, disappointed me greatly. So let's get on with it, shall we? Quite a straightforward one. And uh, you could argue it's the first and last bot that I got this month. So first and worst. First, yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed with this Masterpiece Ratchet. He's, he's a really awesome figure. Great transformation, um, yeah, a few little yellowing spots on it, but uh, apart from that, it's an awesome, awesome figure. Really, really like it, and I like the character as well. And then the worst item, yeah, Fast Action Battler's mud flap. <sighs> yeah, he's just disappointing all round, to be honest. <laughs> There's not really much good you can say about this thing. The car mode's okay, I suppose, um, but um, yeah... It is what it is. It, it came as a as an extra figure in with, with the the you know the Fire Blast Optimus that I wanted to buy, but uh, it is what it is. It's a thing, and uh, yeah, so it's the worst I got this month. So yeah, there we go. Another haul done. Um, moving into November, um, got some Korean toys I want to throw down on. Obviously, I want to get the uh, the rest of the, uh, the the Mini Force figures for the uh, Giantron Combiner. Um, Obviously, there's some comics I need to get now. I want to finish off the, uh, well, 
that I want to get Galaxies issue, what is it, uh, 10, 11, and 12. I'm not going to bother with uh, uh, 7, 8, 9. Um, but, um, and then I've got to get hold of a King Grimlock number 3, and then there's all the other you know, sort of comics that come around this month, so it should be another uh, comic month next month. Um, yeah, and MCM Comic Con is coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, I've got my ticket for it. I'm hoping to go to the MCM Comic Con. Hopefully, In Demand will be there. Hopefully, the COVID won't uh, scupper my plans because obviously we've seen the, now we're getting into winter. The COVID is on the rise again. Um, I'm hoping it it'll go ahead. I mean, I've got to I've got to get me a COVID pass because I haven't got one. Uh, an online COVID pass. I've got to get one sorted out because that they won't accept anything less going into the NEC for that event. But um, anyway. I've been Too Far Wellness. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and I will catch you all next time. Goodbye.